So the second hormone is the gonadotropin releasing hormone, also called the GnRH, and it's a peptide of 10 amino acids. You can see the different amino acids over here. So the glutamate is a modified form, pyroglutamate, and the hormone is secreted at the onset of puberty. So it actually uh, shows the sexual maturation of the student. Uh, and it's important for triggering your sexual development. And it's essential for the normal sexual physiology of both males and females. And the primary effect uh, is on the release of uh, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Whereas the secondary effect is on the uh, synthesis of or the secretion of estrogen and progesterone in females and testosterone in males. So the GnRH is synthesized as a pre-pro hormone, uh, which is a 92 amino acid long uh, pre-pro hormone. And the pre-pro hormone contains a signal peptide and the signal peptide is cleaved uh, during its process of activation. And the pro uh, at GnRH has a section of peptides called the gap peptides uh, that is ranging about 56 amino acids which is also you can see it over here it is also see this is the portion so this is also removed and this is the signal sequence that is being removed so the rest of the portion that is this portion the yellow colored portion this is the active hormone so this is uh, the hormone uh, sequence that you are seeing so again, uh, there is a tendency for GnRH uh, 1 to 5 also to happen uh, during metabolism. So it can be metabolos, uh, metabolized into a pentapeptide, right? So the secreted, uh, uh, the GnRH is secreted by the hypophyseal portal bloodstream, which carries uh, it to the pituitary gland and it activates the pituitary gland to release the hormones that we said, uh, said about earlier, the LH and the FSH. And uh, it has a receptor called the GnRHR, gonadotropin releasing hormone receptor. It's a, a G protein coupled receptor and its, uh, its mechanism of action is through the phospholipase C. So the phospholipase C, we've already seen it, uh, mobilizes calcium and uh, activates protein kinase C. And this leads to uh, activation of several proteins, uh, ultimately causing the synthesis and secretion of LH and FSH. So the GnRH is degraded by proteolysis within a few minutes because we do not need continuous stimulation. And the GnRH uh, activity is very low during childhood and it's activated at uh, puberty or adolescence. So during the reproductive years, uh, the activity of GnRH is critical for successful reproductive function. And it's controlled by feedback loops, but during pregnancy, they, uh, these feedback loops do not come into action. And uh, this is the pathway that is given. So in this pathway, you can see it's given as analog. It's just uh, uh, regarding other molecules also. So the GnRH binds to its uh, receptor. And the GnRH uh, is a G protein coupled receptor, which activates phospholipase C. Phospholipase C cleaves phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate into diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate. The diacylglycerol activates potassium, sorry, protein kinase C. The IP3 mobilizes intracellular calcium from endoplasmic reticulum and the calcium, the PKC also activates the voltage-gated calcium channels so that more calcium enters into the cells. And the whole system, the PKC uh, and the calcium, they all activate the RAF system. The RAF is just a protein. And as a result, you have the ERK that is being activated. The ERK uh, and uh, at the other side, you have the calcium which activates 
uh, gonadotropin secretion and uh, the calcium also activates uh, JNK that is the Janus kinase So the ERK, uh, ERK is extracellular signal regulated kinases. The, it's also kinases. It's an example of uh, uh, MAP kinase. So the ERK and the Janus kinase both together, they activate uh, three different systems. One is the gonadotropin alpha subunit synthesis. Second is the GNRS receptor synthesis. And third is the MAP kinase phosphatase synthesis so it uh, activates together with each other okay so jnk can also be called as uh, c gen like this is the c gen so c gen uh, n terminal kinesis is also known as that okay so this is the pathway and uh, elevated level of prolactin means uh, it decreases the gnrh activity Hyperinsulinemia increases GnRH activity and this leads to disorderly LH and FSH activity. So regarding regulation of GnRH, this is the pathway that you can see in males. That is the hypothalamus releases GnRH which acts on the anterior pituitary and the anterior pituitary produces LH and FSH which has its target organ as the testis and the testis uh, increases spermatogenesis and the Leydig cells is also activated which again increase the spermatogenesis and uh, in this condition uh, the testis also produces the inhibit molecule or protein this is the inhibit protein and the testosterone protein sorry uh, hormone which uh, both of them uh, produces a negative effect on the pituitary and the hypothalamus. Testosterone has a negative effect on the pituitary and the hypothalamus inhibit on the uh, pituitary. This is for males. So consider the system in females where you have a series of reactions that take place due, due to the menstrual uh, periods that you have and uh, first is the follicular phase second is the ovulation phase and third is the luteal phase so the follicular phase is where the ovary and its follicles get activated and uh, it becomes ready to release the ovum in the ovulation period the ovum is released and in the luteal phase after ovum release the corpus luteum that remains behind uh, or the, it is what is what remains of the follicle or the ruptured follicle and the corpus luteum is degraded during the luteal phase so this is the three these are the three phases so in the first condition in the follicular phase the first set of processes are the same the pituitary produces LHFSH and uh, which acts on the ovaries the ovary releases estradiol estradiol has a negative effect on the endometrium of uterus and the hypothalamus so it inhibits both the hypothalamus and the endometrium in the follicular phase in the ovulation phase this changes the estradiol that is produced has a positive effect on the endometrium and a positive effect on the hypothalamus in the third condition that is in the luteal phase together with estradiol progesterone is also produced and estradiol and progesterone both have a inhibitory effect on the endometrium and the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus so this is the uh, situation in females so next is the kispeptin GnRH pathway. So kispeptin signals uh, directly to the GnRH neurons, so uh, which express the kispeptin receptor. So the location of kispeptin neuron populations uh, resides within the preoptic area, that is inside the um, hypothalamus, 
and uh, the kiss peptide neurons can co-express neurokinin B which is stimulatory and dynorphin which is inhibitory uh, so that you can see it over here so this is the dynorphin over here and this is the neurokinin B over here so it, this produces a positive effect this produces a negative effect so which uh, the kiss peptide neuron uh, via the neurokinin B or the neurokinin by the neurokinin B receptor this is the receptor that you see over here so by the neurokinin receptor uh, autosynaptically regulate the kiss peptide secretion so in humans uh, the KNDY neurons or the kiss peptide infundibular neurons they release uh, both negative and positive so they produce both uh, negative and positive feedbacks and uh, this is the pathway that you can see it's it's a neuron uh, which produces the dynorphin and uh, neurokinin B and uh, this activates the kiss peptin this is the kiss peptin neuron so the kiss peptin is, in the, uh, is released and the kiss peptide goes and binds to the GnRH neuron and the GnRH neuron is activated and GnRH is released. So ME is a media, uh, median eminence and uh, this causes the GnRH to be released. So it's a process of release of GnRH from the hypothalamus. Right? Um, and uh, this is the rest of the reaction that you normally see. So next is functions, that is the control of FSH and LSH. So GnRH stimulates the synthesis and secretion of FSH and LSH and it's controlled by the size and frequency of the GnRH pulses. Because the GnRH is, uh, we use, already saw that it's with the help of neurons and the kiss peptin signals allow the release of uh, uh, GnRH and it's not a continuous process, it's a pulse process. Like every uh, signal comes positive, the GnRH gets released. So it acts in pulses or uh, parts, parts, uh, not in a continuous system. And it's by feedback from antigens and estrogens. Okay. So low frequency GnRH uh, pulses uh, for FSH release. And if it is high high frequency GnRH pulses, that is for LH release. So, uh, again, GnRH causes secretion between males and uh, females. Uh, sorry, differences in males and females. In males, GnRH is secreted in pulses at constant frequency, like every 1 minute or every 12 minutes or every 10 minutes. So, it's, there is a constant frequency of its release. And in females, the frequency varies according to the menstrual cycle. Uh, and uh, just before ovulation, there is a high increase in GnRH pulsing right so third is the secretion in all vertebrates that is necessary for correct in uh, reproductive function uh, it is important for follicular growth ovulation corpus luteum maintenance in females and spermatogenesis in males so uh, functions of neurohormones and behavior uh, like the hormone produced neurohormones are a neurohormone is the hormone produced in a specific neural cell and released at its neural terminal. Exam the example is the GnRH secreting neurons. So the neurons are regulated by afferent neurons using several transmitters like norepinephrine, gamma aminobutyric acid and glucamate. And the dopamine appears to simulate LH release. Uh, dopamine can uh, inhibit LH re release in ovac over um, uh, ovary removed females okay so kiss peptin appears to be an important regulator of the gnrh release so the gnrh release can also be regulated by estrogen via the kiss peptin producing neurons that also express estrogen receptor alpha so second is the effects of behavior like gnrh production or release is one of the few confirmed examples of behavior influencing hormones uh, example is that uh, it's uh, fish that is a kiklet fish 
that uh, becomes socially dominant in presence of upregulated uh, GnRH secretion, whereas it becomes socially subordinate uh, with a down regulation of GnRH secretion.